Fort Laramie. Fort Laramie, starring Raymond Burr as Captain Lee Quince. Specially transcribed tales of the dark and tragic ground of the wild frontier. The saga of fighting men who rode the rim of empire. And the dramatic story of Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry. The yeah. whole day, Harrison. Oh, I'm moving, Sergeant. Well, that mount will chill and die of pneumonia. You don't rub them brisk and get some elbow grease behind it. Yes, sir, Sergeant. <clears throat> Why you suppose he does it, Sergeant? Who does what? Captain Quince. Up for Reveille he was, and off and riding. Habit, maybe. It was a clean morning, had a feel to it. Riding off alone, I'd like that myself. <sighs> There's a touch of spring in there, all right. Buffalo grass as green as can be. I was down to corral this morning, and even at low water, the old Laramie was rippling along like it had a song in it. Harrison. <laughs> yes, Sergeant? You think you could manage to blanket that mount before you write your next poem? Hmm? Oh, I guess I'm holding you up. Captain says he threw a nail. I told him I'd see the farrier got a look at it. Right forefoot, looks like. I meant to see to it. I got business at the saddlery anyway. Uh, Sergeant, I'd sure admire some outdoor duty today if you could arrange it. Stable detail, sort of outdoors, Harrison. In and out. I was thinking more like the hay yard, or lending a hand in the post garden, or like that. I'd be obliged. Anything outdoors? Anything at all, Sergeant. You see up there on the bluff by the old cemetery? I'm looking that away. That white patch, the top of the rise? Oh, sure, I see that. Well, now, that's a patch of wild daisies, Harrison. Anybody asks, you tell them you got my leave to go up there and pick them. Oh, Sergeant. It's outdoor work. I don't aim to get myself laughed right off this post. It'd be a useful service you was performing, Harrison. Officers are having a fancy ball tonight at Old Bedlam. Well, they might give a stripe or two to the trooper who saw to their decorations. I tell you, Sergeant, I, I like this stable detail just fine. More I think of it, more I like it. I'm glad to oblige. Any time, Harris. And I get me three stripes someday, like as not I'll mosey all over the post, too, on a fine spring day. I could make them daisies in order, Harris. Why, look down there, Sergeant Gorse. Uh, ain't that a stage coming over the bridge? It is. Well, he's riding on a flat wheel. Yeah. Maybe that's why he's pulling into the fort this time of day. Being the wheelwrights are near the smithy in the saddlery, I'll just mosey on down there and see what's going on. Give me that lead rope, soldier. No, oh, here. Get to your duty, Daisy. Oh, yes, Sergeant. <laughs> to put up here for the night. This is an army post. <laughs> uh, now, Ophie, settle yourself this minute. There's nothing but men here. Now, ma'am, there ain't a stage built that'll run on three wheels. But an army post? Why, we're women. <laughs> well, oh, no. be that as it may, we, we gotta put up here. 
It took all I had and then some to bring us clean to the fort. Now, the wheelwright tells me he can put us on the trail by sunup, and that's the level best we can do. I declare, I don't know what. Homer off there in Virginia City, waiting for Ophie and me. Well, you could maybe telegraph ahead if you think your husband will worry after you. Well, I don't know what to make of you. Of course he'll worry. Homer's bound to worry. His wife and baby girl spending the night in the middle of nowhere at an army post. <laughs> oh, Ma. Opie, if you owe Ma me once more, I'll bang you with my umbrella. Oh, but there's one, Ma, coming right up to us. One what? A soldier, Ma. Oh, uh, Sergeant Gorse. Stand right behind me, Opie. <laughs> Wheelwright says you got trouble, Clay. Yeah, all kinds, Sergeant. Oh, uh, meet up with Mrs. Klein Hexel. Her daughter, Miss Ophie, Sergeant Gorse. Ma'am? Miss Ophie? Are you in charge here, young man? Well, no, ma'am. Not exactly. Then I demand to be taken to whoever is. I want to telegraph Homer. I want to see with my own eyes the quarters for my daughter and me. Homer, and... ma'am? That's Mr. Klein Hexel. He's in Virginia City. Oh. Are you listening to me, young man? Why, yes, ma'am. I, I do. Clay! Clay, where are you going? Well, I'm pretty sure that wheelwright needs a hand. I uh, sure thank you for taking over this way, well, Sergeant. Hey, now, Clay, you... We've had no food since breakfast, young man. That'll have to be taken care of. Now, those carpet bags over there are ours, and they were brand new when we left Omaha. So, mind you, tend them easy. Of uh, Who did you say was in charge here? Well, I didn't say, ma'am, but offhand, I'd say you was. <laughs> Ophie, simmer down. <laughs> I just wondered if uh, if you were in my position, what would you do, Captain? Mm. What? What would you do? Uh, uh, I'm afraid I haven't been listening, Mr. Sabitz. I'm sorry. Uh, what would I do about what? Would you go alone if you didn't have a young lady to escort? To the officer's ball tonight. Oh, good Lord, I'd forgotten about that. It's the first one since I've been here. If you're smart, you'll get up a poker game. You could play right here in my quarters if you want. Well, I was rather looking forward to the ball. I'd sooner ride into an ambush. You know, it's hard to picture in your mind a, a ball right here in Old Bedlam. It, it doesn't seem part of the West somehow. It shouldn't be part of it. You want a cigar, Sabitz? Uh, no, thank you, sir. Captain, you don't talk like you're planning to attend this evening. Huh. I'm not. You sure? Mr. Seibert's the last ball I attended was on an order. Besides, I have some work I want to do tonight, if I can get the major's permission. Well, I... I don't know, and it, it's your business, all right, sir, but uh, she thinks you're going to the ball. She? Miss Willa. I was over at the Sutler store this morning, and Pliny, uh... Mr. Burgess gave me his leave to ask Miss Willa to the ball. Well... But she means to go with you, Captain. I don't know why. I didn't ask her. She seems right sure you will, though, before the day's out. Oh? She seems content just to wait for you. Miss Will is a pretty thing. She makes a mistake, though, waiting for anyone. Captain, I wouldn't have asked her, but there aren't many single ladies to choose from. I've got no claim on Miss Willa, Mr. Seibert, if that's what you mean. No, it's more her claim I was thinking about. She's sat on you, Captain Quince. That's a pure waste. Who is it? Captain Quince, Lieutenant Seibert. Major Daggett. Sir. As you were, gentlemen. This isn't exactly official business. Yes, sir. I just looked in the ballroom on the way up. Looks like things are taking shape for tonight. Yes, sir, they are. Mrs. Daggett and, and the other wives are doing a fine job with the decorations. Well, they enjoy that sort of thing. It's time we had some festivity around here. Yes, sir. That what you came to tell us, Major? I expect to see you both there, Captain Quince. There's something I want to talk to you about, both Major. Both of you there. <clears throat> I don't know whether you've heard yet or not, but we have some guests on the post. A Mrs. Kleinhexel from Omaha and her daughter. Their stage broke down. They'll be with us overnight. <clears throat> uh, the daughter, sir. What about her, Mr. Sybert? 
Well, sir, in the interest of showing Fort Laramie's hospitality, what I mean is if she's not otherwise engaged, I'd be proud to see her to the ball tonight. <laughs> I think that's a good idea, Cybert. I would like to discuss something, Major. Yeah, so would I, Captain Quince. Then if you'll excuse me, Major, Captain... Uh, Mr. Seibert, you'll find the young lady in a mother quartered next to the sutler store. Yes, sir. Well, Lee? If we can forget that pink tea a while, Major. I told you, Lee, I expect you at that ball tonight. This is no mere whim of mine, and if I have to order you to be there, I will. We're not going to see eye to eye on that ever. You understand all about troop morale in the field. I never knew an officer to show greater concern for his men. But I think you owe something to your fellow officers, Captain. What do you mean? There's such a thing as post-morale, too. The junior officers admire you, they respect you. It'll mean something to them to see you share in their off-duty entertainment, relaxation. You're a hard man to know, Lee. Hmm. Especially in a ball. I wouldn't insist if I didn't think it was important. I've been trying to tell you what I think's important ever since you came in. All right. Yellow Horse. He's still in the stockade. Yes, I know that. But I can't send him to Leavenworth till I receive orders from Washington. So far, they haven't come through. Can't you telegraph Washington? Uh, in, a, in an emergency. His renegade band of Sioux is still marauding. Tell me, does this have any connection with the fact that you left the post alone before Reveille this morning? I rode out to the reservation, had a long talk with Eagle Wing. Hmm. I hope he understood it was unofficial, Captain. Eagle Wing and I talked only as men interested in peace. Well, at least he isn't a hostile and no great friend of Yellow Horse, as I remember. He says a few of Yellow Horse's old band have come onto the reservation in the last few weeks. That could mean trouble, Major. A few hostiles on a reservation of 4,000? Hmm. I don't think so, Captain. I'm not talking about a Sioux uprising. I'm talking about maybe six hostiles thinking to set Yellow Horse free. Eagle Wing said this? I said it. It could happen. Well, suppose it could. I don't think it's likely. I do. This band's never had a leader like Yellow Horse. He never killed for gain or because the whites invaded his hunting grounds. He killed to kill. Because he loved to kill. He's their, their inspirational leader. They'll come after him. All right, Lee. What is it you want? Move Yellow Horse. Move him? Yeah, over to Fort Kearney. Small details starting at dusk. Uh, I don't like it, Lee. He'd be that much closer to Leavenworth. No, no, I can't risk it. I'm on orders to secure Yellow Horse at Fort Laramie. I'd need more reason than you give me to go against them. Then I've said my piece, Major. Lee, you, uh, you feel pretty keenly about this. Why? Maybe it's not important. I asked you a question. All right. Call it a symbol. We could have killed him when we took him. But we held something out to the Indians... A fair trial. White man's justice. Yellow Horse was tried fairly. And sentenced fairly. The Indians know that. Yellow Horse should pay for his killing. Legally. If an escape is arranged, even if he's killed in the attempt, he's a martyr to every red man because a white man killed him. Sure, I don't disagree with any of that, Lee. But your answer is still the same. It has to be. My orders are clear. I have to respect them. I wish I could count on your understanding. I wish I could give it to you, Major. All right, Captain. We both had our say. Now let's forget it. I'd like you to join my party this evening. That an invitation, sir? That is an order, Captain. Yes, sir. Well, I wouldn't have believed it. It's a regular store. Yes. I declare, Mr. Burgess, 
It's the equal of anything we have in Omaha. Oh, yeah. oh yes, it is. Chicago, New York, Boston. <laughs> Pliny Burgess bows to no one when it comes to merchandise. Now, this bowl of cloth. Ophie, just look at the quality. <laughs> <laughs> Those threads. Pure gold, madam. Pure gold. Why, there's no such thing. Well, in color, I mean. <laughs> yes, pure gold. Oh, well, yes. I see they are. <gasps> oh, Mom! Ophie, will you stop clutching me so? Look, Mom, oh, it's another one. <laughs> oh, my. Well, he's just another soldier, Ophie. You'd best get used to the sight of them. They're all over out here. Afternoon to you, Captain Quince. Miss Willow Round, Pliny. Uh, to the back. With the account books, as usual, Captain. Thank you. <laughs> My sakes, he's a big one. Yeah, oh, yes, he is. <laughs> oh, now, Ophie, you stop making eyes this minute. You've been spoke for by that other one, and he's a lieutenant. <laughs> <laughs> lovely girl. Shy, but she's a lovely girl. Miss Willen. Well, yes. I have a right Hello, Lee. Hello. Well, come on in. If you're busy, why, we can forget no, about it. Oh, you'll not get off that easy. I'm not busy, and I've been expecting you. You... You shouldn't wait for me, will you? You know that. Sit down, Lee. Thanks. I don't wait for you. As you say, I know better than that. I wait for Major Daggett. How's that? Sooner or later, he always orders you to attend the ball. And when he does, sooner or later, you decide you'd rather escort me than dance with Rankin officers' wives the entire evening. Is that the way it is? I'm afraid so. But that's not a complaint. I'll be ready at eight. All right. <laughs> well, don't look so trapped, Lee. You're not, you know. I... I wasn't thinking about me... Don't worry about me, I understand. It's a lovely day. It'll be a lovely evening, Lee. Yeah. It looks like Mr. Seibertz is going to have a lovely evening, too. Oh, poor Ophie. Poor Seibertz. You could have spared him that if you'd accepted him instead of waiting around for... For Major Daggett. Yeah. Yeah, for Major Daggett. <gasps> Good heavens, what... Madam, come here! Come after me! Get him out of here, Savages! No, uh, madam, madam, please. Get him out! Oh, 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 oh,
We've lived with him. But we've no mind to be unkind to strangers. Well, you mean to say that Indians have the run of this fort, young man? Some Indians, the ones we know and trust. Ones who trust us. You'll find that in the West. But what about all the killing? The massacres, that's all you hear in Omaha and near all you read. How many whites the red savages have murdered. Now I say that's true or it isn't. Some of it is, ma'am. Indians are like us. There's good and bad. We've got a bad one on the post, Yellow Horse. But he's in the stockade. That's as it should be. You think that, don't you? I think that. Well, it's a pity you can't tell by looking. Oh, you can sometimes if you know what to look for. But that comes with knowing, folks. White men or red men. Face value. It's a risky business, young man. Many's the time I've been dead wrong in judging a body on first sight, I mean. Of course, I'm talking about white folks. You planning to live in the West, ma'am? Virginia City. Homer's out there now. Ophie and me are going to him. Sakes, I guess I got a lot of learning ahead of me. A lot of learning. Sergeant? Over here, Sergeant. Oh, yes, sir. Captain? Finished eating, Gores? Yes, sir. Eat plenty, too. Good thing I got no bars on my shoulders. I'd be right too stuffed to waltz tonight. That so? Fine spring evening for a flock of fancy waltzes, though. All right, Sergeant, you're making your point. Yes, sir. You, uh... Got any plans for tonight after tattoo? Oh, I drew some duty, Captain. Duty? Kind of special duty, too. Orders come down from Major Daggett to double the guard at the stockade. Well, I figured you'd know that. No. No, I didn't. Ain't they sending Yellow Horse on to Leavenworth before long? That's up to Washington. Yeah. Sure got a lot of time back there, ain't they, Captain? Seems like it. Sometimes. Did you have something you wanted me to do tonight? No. No, nothing. Well, before I told you about the duty, you asked about my plans, Captain. You answered my questions. Yes, sir. That's all, Sergeant. If anything comes up at the stockade, I'll see you hear about it, sir. You'll report to Major Daggett. Yes, sir. Good night, Gorse. Captain? Yeah? It's a right smart sash you're wearing. Good night, Gorse. Yes, sir. She's been trying to get your attention for the last half hour, Lee. Who has? Mrs. Kleinhexel, and you haven't even asked her to dance yet, either. I know, I know, but I... Shh, here she comes. Excuse me, you two, but I've got to have word to this young man. I'm sending the lieutenant to dance with you, dearie. Captain Quince was just on his way over to you, Mrs. Kleinhexel. I'll find Lieutenant Cybers. Well, shall we, Captain? Proud to, ma'am. I could waltz with a glass of water on my head and never spill a drop. That's what Homer always says. You try it with me, ma'am. You stand a chance of drowning. Oh, there's good humor in you, young man. I like that. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. oh I'm sorry. Uh, I wanted to tell you, I went out on the veranda for a breath of air a while back. And when I first saw them, I came near to screaming like I did this afternoon with the other Indian. You're developing a real eye for Indians, ma'am. Yes, I am. I've been trying to recollect, though. 
I don't believe he was wearing them in the store today. White bird? Wearing what? Uh, the feathers. No, ma'am, he wasn't wearing feathers. I didn't think so. Now, these Indians was. Well, maybe it suits their fancy. You're sure they were wearing feathers? I just told you. There was five or six, I guess. Excuse me, and... ma'am. I have to speak to the major. Now, what's wrong with feathers? Major Daggett, sir. Where are those shots coming from, Captain? That's a stockade, Major. Cybertz! Lawson! Let's go! Six of them. All dead, Sergeant? Dead engines, Captain. Good thing you doubled the guard, Major. What about Yellow Horse? Oh, he was whooping for a while. But I checked him. He's got his health, all of it. Captain. Yes, sir? Fall in a detail. I want Yellow Horse on his way to Leavenworth no later than noon tomorrow. Any questions? Just one, sir. What about Washington? I'll telegraph Washington tonight. Oh, Captain. Yes, Major. Thank you. Fort Laramie is produced and directed by Norman MacDonald and stars Raymond Burr as Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry, with Vic Perrin as Sergeant Gorse. The script was specially written for Fort Laramie by Kathleen Height, with sound patterns by Bill James and Ray Kemper, musical supervision by Amerigo Marino. Featured in the cast were Jeanette Nolan, Sam Edwards, Eleanor Tannen, Harry Bartell, Jack Moyles, Shirley Mitchell, Howard McNear, Frank Cady, and Jack Crucian. Company, attention. Dismiss. Next week, another transcribed story of the Northwest Frontier and the troopers who fought under Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry. Comes an emergency, it's savings that talk. When sickness strikes, in time of accident or emergency, it helps to be in good financial shape. That's why it pays and pays to invest in United States savings bonds regularly. Have the money deducted automatically through payroll savings or through your bank's bond-a-month plan. Let the bonds you've saved save you when you need money. The new 3% interest United States savings bond, better than ever. This has been a public service message from CBS Radio.